I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. In this video, we will discuss about modulus function. Now, in many parts of the world, we also call it absolute function. So, let's first talk about what is a modulus function. We'll begin with the numbers. Graph modulus or absolute function solve simple equations and look into some identities which are normally used with modulus functions. So let's talk about modulus numbers to begin with. Now whenever we say modulus number we are putting these bars here. So if I write a number here within these bars which is the sign of modulus function that means absolute value or modulus value of 5 is 5. However, if I have a negative number, in that case, its value is also positive, right? So it will be just 3. So what we say here is that the modulus value or absolute value is always positive. Right. So we will use these two words, modulus or absolute value, in terms. So that is what we understand about a modulus of a number. Now, how can we define this as a function? Right. So this is, we can say, modulus. of a number. Now we are going to look into this as a function. So modulus or absolute function. function. So whenever we say function we try to relate it in terms of variables. So if I write a function which is f of x equals to absolute value or modulus of x. So this becomes a function, right? So this is the y value in terms of x value. Now it means what? It really means that if I sketch the inside function which is, let us say, we sketch y equals to x first, y equals to x. In that case, this is the inside function. It will be a straight line diagonally across the coordinate system as shown here. So that is your function modulus of x will be what then? So f of x, which we are defining as absolute value of x, should be always positive. As you have seen, all negative values will become positive. So this part, which is negative, gets reflected. And what you get is a line, kind of like this. So this function, which I am now drawing, represents the modulus of f of x. Does it make sense to you, right? So that is the graph of our function, absolute function, right? So this is x and that is y for you. Okay. Algebraically, we can define this function, let's say f of x, which is equal to absolute value of x as a piecewise function. So we normally define it as a piecewise function. Let me write down. So, we can say that the value of this function is same as x in this part, right? So, so, we could actually divide it into three pieces. We can say it is same as x when x is greater than 0. At this point, when x is 0, it is 0. So, it is equal to 0 when x is equal to 0. But when x is less than 0, it is negative value of x. Does it make sense to you, right? Now, alternately, 
we can also write it like this. Let me write down alternate definition, which is normally utilized. So normally, we only divide it into two parts. So absolute value of x could also be written as the value of x, because at 0, x is also 0. So we say x greater than or equal to 0, and negative value of x for x less than 0. Does it make sense to you? So either way, you could write absolute or modulus function in the form of a piecewise function. So I hope that part is absolutely clear. Right? So now let's move on and look into how to sketch graph of different functions where we have modulus. So we'll go with the principles which we had just learned and here we'll take up two examples. Graph absolute functions that is the question for you first is we have taken a linear function y equals to 2x minus 4 you can always pause the video graph this function and then look into my suggestions so i'm going to make a rough sketch here so what we will do here is that first we will sketch y equals to 2x minus 4 that is the inside function which is a straight line so y equals to 2x minus 4 really means that we'll begin with your y-intercept of minus 4 and slope is 2 right so so at 1 we'll have the value 2 and at 2 there we go and we can join these points and draw our line so that becomes the line representing y equals to 2x minus 4. Now if I want to say that y is absolute value of this function, then what do I have to do? Well, this is the negative part, right? So it becomes positive. It has to be reflected upright. So now this portion will get reflected. And what we get here is a line which is going to go through Four, right and there you go it is definitely 0 and x equals to 2 do you see that so this is the graph of your function y equals to absolute value of 2x minus 4 so I hope you find it easy to understand right so that is how we should be drawing it is that clear to you let's take another example and this time we'll take a quadratic equation right so basics prerequisites are that you should know how to sketch quadratic equations and lines. So we have 4 minus x squared. So again, what I'm going to do here is draw a line which represents 4 minus x squared, right? So that means it's a parabola which opens downwards, right? Minus, right? And if x is 0, the value is 4. So basically, we have a parabola, which is kind of like this. And the points of our interest, which help to identify this graph, is these two, right? So these two values will be square root of 4, which is minus 2, and plus 2, plus minus square root two, 4, right? So that gives you the graph of the quadratic function 4 minus x squared but truly speaking we need to find this the absolute value of this graph that really means that we are going to reflect this right the negative portions so we have a sharp corner at this point and it goes like this same here and this portion remains same it does it make sense to you correct so that is how this graph is going to look like all right so i hope it makes sense now it's a good idea at this stage also to define your function so we can also write that the absolute value of 2x minus 4 could be written as two pieces where it is 2x minus 4 for x which is greater than or equal to 2 but it is negative of 2x minus 4 when x is less than 2. Perfect. Now, in case of the parabola, the definition 
could be like this 4 minus x squared so what do you see here is the center portion remaining same right the other two are changing correct so in this particular case we could write this as negative value of 4 minus x squared if x is greater than 2 and it is same as 4 minus x squared if x is greater than minus 2 we can include here 2 and minus 2 right and it is negative of 4 minus x squared when x is less than minus 2 does it make sense to you so you could actually redefine as a piecewise function your modulus function as I've written okay now as an exercise what you could also do is write domain and range right so you could do that so that could be in addition to what we have just done so I hope that makes sense have a good look at it and now let's move on to see how to solve equations where absolute functions or modulus functions are there as a part of equation now let us try to understand how to solve equations which are involving modulus functions. Well, as an example, I can say that if you have a general equation, for example, ax plus b equals to some constant k, right? So in that case, it really means that you have to solve two equations. One is that ax plus b should be equal to k or ax plus b could be equal to minus k since the absolute value of minus k is also equal to k does it make sense to you right so that is kind of important to understand so i hope this have a good look at it helps you to understand the process right now let's apply this learning and then solve the equations simple equations involving just one absolute function so we have to solve this equation which is 2x minus 5 absolute value is equal to 3 so as suggested we'll just divide this into two parts right so we'll try to solve what is the value of 2x minus 5 equals to 3 and also the equation 2x minus 5 equals to minus 3 since absolute value of minus 3 will also be 3 you get the idea right so let's do it so we have 2x equals to 3 plus 5 2x equals to a sorry 2x equals to 8 and x is equals to 8 over 2 and so we can write x is equal to 4 on the right hand side we have 2x equals to minus 3 plus 5 so we have 2x equal to 2 and x is equal to 2 over 2 that gives us x as 1 so these are the two solutions for us well it's a good idea to check our solutions right it is not necessary but since that is kind of our introductory video on this particular topic let's try to check it out so if i substitute 4 so what do i get so i get 2 times 4 minus 5 which is equal to 8 minus 5 which is equal to absolute value of 3 and which is 3 if i use the value 1 then i get 2 times 1 minus 5 which is 2 minus 5 which is absolute value of minus 3 which is also 3 so both of them work out to be correct perfect so that is a simple check which confirms that our strategy is absolutely correct does it make sense to you i hope it does okay now let's do the second question which involves quadratic equations slightly difficult but not that much i like you to pause the video at this stage answer this question and then look into my suggestions so we'll rewrite this into two parts x squared minus 1 equals to 3 and x squared minus 1 equal to minus 3 let's solve them one by one so x squared is 3 plus 1 and what is x equal to well square root of 3 plus 1 is 4 remember whenever you do square root you have to write plus and minus 
Okay, but think about it, which is kind of important to understand. When do you consider a positive value? You consider a positive value for this interval when x is in between minus 1 and plus 1. Correct? You consider a positive value for this when x is in between plus or minus 1. Oh, right. So let's think about it. Sorry. Uh, sorry, greater than I, 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 I. Let me sketch this and show you. Let me sketch this. So we have this function uh, which is uh, kind of like this. So this is not minus x, it is plus x. So uh, rather, uh, this is uh, wrong. Okay. So we are looking for positive value when x is either greater than minus 1 or when x is less than, oh, sorry, greater than 1 and less than minus. That is where you need your solution. It does make sense to you, right? Okay. So basically, we get two values which are relevant and we get x is equal to plus minus 2. Since they are in the interval where the function was as original. You get the idea, right? So both are the correct values. We can check it out later. Now let's perform the same operation on the right side. So we get x squared equals to minus 3. And bringing 1 to this side, we get plus 1. x squared is equal to minus 2. Now x squared cannot be minus 2. So that means no real solution. Perfect. So, so that is how we could get our solution and definitely we have only one solution here, right? Now, you can always check the result by substituting the value plus minus 2, right? Let's do that check also. Okay. So within absolute function, we have x squared, we can write plus or minus 2 squared minus 1. Now, square of a negative number is also positive. So, what we get here is absolute value of 4 minus 1, which is 4 minus 1 is 3. So, we get the expected also, which is 3. Correct? So, that confirms that both plus and minus are correct. Now, let me again get back to this point where kind of I tried to confuse you a bit, right? So, let's do it once again. So what I'm trying to do here is sketch the function absolute value of x squared minus 1. So let me first sketch x squared minus 1, which will look like this, right? And the absolute value will be that this part is going to be reflected, the other remains same, right? That's what I meant. So it is positive when the function is on the left side of minus 1 or on the right side of 1. And it is inverted. That means negative value we are looking into when it is in between plus and minus 1. Correct? We were looking for a solution of absolute value being 3. Now, this is 1, right? Somewhere there. Do you see that? So, this line represents y equals to 3. And what we got here is these two values which are plus and minus 2. Does it make sense to you? So graphically, you could see what we have really done here, right? So this is 1 and this is minus 1. Perfect. So I hope that makes sense. Now let's move forward and look into some interesting identities about absolute function. Here are three of them. Now, question number one is, is x plus y absolute value equals to absolute value of x plus absolute value of y? Is absolute value of x, y equals to the product of absolute value of x and y? Is square root of x square equals to x? Well, you can pause the video and answer this question. Let me tell you, all are not correct. Now, let's see. 
So the very first one is, let's take an example. So if I take x equals to 4 and y equals to 5, in that case, we know absolute value of 4 plus 5 is absolute value of 9, which is 9. On the other hand, on the right side, we have absolute value of 4 plus absolute value of 5, and that also gives you 9. So it works. However, if you take the value, one of them negative, let's say if x is, let us say, 5, and y is minus 4, in that case, what happens? So absolute value of 5 minus 4 will be equal to absolute value of 1, which is 1. And that becomes our left side. On the right side, what do we get? On the right side, we get absolute value of 5 plus absolute value of minus 4, which is still 9, not 1. So it is not equal to 5. You get the idea. So the answer here is, is this equal to this? Not always, you can say sometimes. Correct? And this will be equal if both have same sign. That is important to understand. If both x and y are negative or both are positive, then it works. Otherwise, it does not work. Correct. Similarly, you can work out with the product. Well, if you work out with the product, so it is, you'll find that it is always true. The third one here is abs, square root of x square. Is it equal to x? What do you think is the solution for this one? That is the most confusing part. Well, the answer here is sometimes. Some of you must have been surprised. Let me give you an example. So if I take x as, let us say, minus 5, in that case, what happens? So square root of minus 5 square is equal to square root of 25, which is equal to 5. And you know, 5 is not equal to minus 5. Does it make sense to you? Correct? So it is sometimes true, but it is not true when x is negative. Perfect. So it is true when, when x is greater than or equal to 0. Only then it is true. Otherwise, what do you think is this equal to? So if I have to write what is square root of x square equals to? Well, it is always positive, so it should be absolute value of x. Now, this is the most important part where I want to end this video. So, remember, square root of x square is absolute value of x, not just x. So, I hope this example clearly shows you why so. I hope it makes sense. Feel free to write your comments, share your views. And I hope with this, you have good idea about this topic, modulus functions. We'll actually have a separate chapter on this. And there we'll have many examples, which will include more than one absolute value or modulus function in equations and inequalities. Those can be challenging questions for you at times. So I'd like you to carefully go through the list of videos under the chapter of absolute functions to understand or explore more about modulus functions. Thank you and all the best.